Have you ever thought about how hard life is for other people? Not having anything to eat, a place to stay, a nice warm shower to take every night, a comfortable bed to lay in, uh, someone to talk to every day. You know, we all we all have days, good days, bad days, but we always come home to our families and we talk to them. But think about people that don't have anything, nowhere to sleep, nothing to eat, no one to talk to. And the movie The Blind Side, we see all those things. The Blind Side is about a man named Michael Orr. Uh, when he was a child, he got taken away from his mother. She was a drug addict. Uh, lick, uh, she was an addict, cocaine addict. She had drinking problems. Uh, his father was in and out of jail. Um, I think the theme that goes along with The Blind Side is helping others. The, from the beginning of the story, we notice the Tui family helping out Michael Orr, and it's just you know it's just a good thing to do in life. You see someone struggling, and it makes you it makes you feel better about yourself, knowing that you changed that person's life, that that person you change, that person's life you change, help them become a better person in the future. Um, the bl- the Blind Side uh, Evolution of a Game is the book. Um, it came out in 2006. Uh, the author is Michael Lewis. In the book, they go more into detail about Michael's life, about how he met the Tuies, um, every little detail about his uh, family more into detail. Um, the Blind Side, the movie, came out in 2009. Uh, the direct, it was directed by John Lee Hancock. Um, Michael Orr was played by Quentin Aaron. Uh, Louis Leanne Tui was played by Sandra Bullock. Um, yep. Um, some background information on Michael Orr. He was born on May 28th, 1986. He went to the University of Mississippi, where he played football all four years. Uh, he was drafted by the Baltimore Ravens in the 2009 NFL Draft. Um, some scenes that I want to compare from both the book and the and the film. Um, first, I want to talk about the day Michael arrived at the Christian Academy where he met the Tuies. In the book, um, a man named Big Tony, which Michael was staying with at the time of, uh, promised his uh, dead wife that he would get his son, uh, Stephen, into a good Christian school. So he thought... You know, I'm bringing Steven. Why why not bring Michael along for the ride? Um, Big Tony talks to the coach. And the coach went and talked to the the head of the board, the director, to see what he could do for uh, Michael Orr. Um, At first, they, as soon as they saw his transcript, he had, his GPA was a point six. He was, he had, he went to 11 different schools by the grade, by the eighth grade. And they thought that he wasn't cut out to go to that type of school. So the coach kept talking to the principal, kept talking to him. And then one day the principal decided that he would allow Michael Orr into the school. But first he would have to take a semester to do a home school based program. And they agreed that if Michael performed uh, highly... In the program that he would be allowed to go into the Christian school. Bright Crest Academy. In the book, that's what happened. Michael had to take some tests. Go on, go have the home school. And prove them that he could go there. So in the book, they had, um, they got accept- he got accepted. He did, he did alright in the school program. But in the movie, they took, uh, they took it a little differently. In the book, in the movie, they still had Big Tony talk to the coach. The coach talked to the staff, but in the book, they how do I say this? In the book, it took a little bit more time. In the movie, the coach went in there, and his words were, "It's not about it's not about football. It's about changing a man's life." And that scene was very powerful because you could see his tone, his emotion. He actually cared for a young man he's never met in his life before. So in that scene in the movie, 
After that, he got accepted and he was going there regularly. Another uh, scene I want to talk about is the day the Tuies picked up Michael. In the film, in the book, um, in the book, uh, Sean Tui, which is the father, uh, seen Michael before around school, and he used to see him at the baseball, at the basketball practices, and he noticed that he would always wear the same shorts, the same clothes. So one day, he went up to Michael, and his words were, You don't know me, but me and you are alike. Uh, Sean, um, when, he was a, uh, when he was younger, he went through the same thing Michael went. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was, uh, sorry. He was a poor kid. He didn't have much. So he knew, he knew how it felt to go to a private Christian school and not be, and not being able to eat. Having to wear the same clothes. He he understood. He connected to Michael in that personal level. And then after that in the book. He got Michael a lunch card. So he could feed himself every day. And then a few weeks later. While Sean and his wife Leanne were out running some errands. It was a cold snowy cold day. And they saw Michael walking on the streets with nothing but just a t-shirt and some pair of shorts. Um, they stopped, Sean introduced Leanne to Mike, and after that, Leanne went, they went back home, and then the next day, Leanne went to the school, picked up Michael, and went and took him clothes shopping. Um, they, Michael didn't start living with the toys for a couple months after they met, and in the movie, they played it a lot different. In the movie, they had Sean. Me, uh, in the in the movie, they saw my. They saw Sean. They saw Sean at a volleyball game, but he didn't talk to him. The they skipped out the connection part. I think the connection that they had in the movie. I think that was a very big loss for the movie because I feel like if they would have in, in, integrated that into the movie, we got we would have had a more powerful, impactful scene. And then one day after the Thanksgiving play, they saw Michael running. They saw Michael walking down the street with the same thing, just clothes, just his t-shirt and a pair of shorts. So Leanne got out of the car and asked him where he was going, and he said, "I'm going to the gym." And she said, "Why are you going to the gym? It's ten o'clock at night." And his words were, "It's the only place that's warm." Um. In the movie, there was a moment of silence, a very, a very impactful, powerful scene. You could see, you could see the thoughts that were going through her face. You could just see, you could just see what she was thinking. Um, she told Big Mike to get in the car, and she brought him home. Um, I think, I think that they shouldn't. I think they should have done what happened in real life. Because I feel like that would have made it a little bit more impactful. But I think, I think it still worked out. Um, the movie came out 11 years ago, and I was doing some research, and I found an article saying how Michael Orr wasn't happy with the film because he thought that it was too made up, that it, that the things that happened in the movie wasn't really what happened in his real life. And he feels that they should have took it, they should have done the movie a little bit more accordingly to what he actually went through instead of just making something up. Not making something up, but it's more like fairy tales instead of actually going the direction where he actually suffered all the things he went through. I think that would have made the movie a little bit more powerful. Um, that's all. Thank you very much.